How to prepare the statement of changes in equity? This is today's solved example step by step and we will follow IFRS 18, the newest standard for this purpose. Although if you're still working with IS1, no worries, it is almost the same. I am Sylvia of cpdbox.com. We help thousands of people to master IFRS and we can help you too. So just head to our website, sign up for our newsletter. It's free and packed with practical tips. So let's take a look at the example. JBCPLC's balances on equity accounts were as follows. And here's the table with four different dates the year end of 20x4, year end of 20x3, 1st January 20x3 and year end of 20x2. And now note that year end of 20x2 is just one day apart from 1st January 20x3. And the balances on retained earnings are different. So as an experienced accountant, I assume there was some change in policy or correction of errors. We will see. And these accounts usually come from either trial balance or even the statement of financial position. They are not the movements yet. They are just balances and we are going to explain why and how they moved. During 20x3, the following transactions occurred. So here we have some list, but in real life, it is you who should investigate what moved and how. So let's see the most common ones. Change in accounting policy resulting in restatement of retained earnings on 1st January 20x3 by 660 currency units upwards. And here we do not need the information what policy changed. We just need to know the effect on equity so that I can show you how to report that. Payment of dividends to JBC's shareholders of 3000 currency units. This is very common transaction. Upward revaluation of property plan and equipment of 580 currency units while revaluation model under IS-16 is applied. So here we can have some transactions resulting from the application of other IFRS standards. This is just one of them. And then you can have a cash flow hedge reserve revaluation of some financial assets here and something like that. Net profit for the year 2 OX3 of 4,800 currency units. Of course, that's absolutely necessary information to state in your statement of changes in equity. Then we have a list of transactions in equity occurring in 20x4. So note that we have two years covered here, 20x3 and 20x4. And let's see what we have here. Issue of 2000 new one currency unit shares at 1.10 per share. And that's a new type of transaction we did not have in the previous year. Payment of dividends to JBC shareholders of 2,500 currency units. Okay, same type as the previous year. Downward revaluation of property plan and equipment of 200 currency units. Then some information about the revaluation model. And here we have downward, not upward revaluation like in 20x3. A net profit for the year 20 x 4 of 5,300 currency units. Prepare the statement of changes in equity for the year ended 31st December 20 x 4. So here the current year will be 20 x 4 and we will prepare comparatives for 20 x 3 because yes, under IFRS 18, we need to present comparatives too. So let's take a little revision directly from the standard IFRS 18 about the statement of changes in equity that was carried over from IS1. Here, the entity shall present at least total comprehensive income from previous statement, separately amounts attributable to owners of the parent and to non-controlling interests. Now, in this particular example, we have it quite simple because we are preparing the individual statement for a single entity, JBPLC, not for a group. And non-controlling interest indicates that this applies to consolidated statement of changes in equity. In this example, the full total comprehensive income will be attributable to the owners of the parent. The next important thing to report for each component of equity separately 
effects of retrospective application or restatement recognized according to IS-8. Remember, there was a change in accounting policy in this example. So we are going to report that separately. Also, we need to report the movement for each component of equity separately. And it is, in fact, reconciliation between the carrying amount at the beginning and at the end of the reporting period. And here we must disclose separately changes resulting from the profit or loss, other comprehensive income and transactions with owners, such as contributions from owners, like issue of new shares, distribution of dividends and similar. So that's just what we're going to do now. Here we have a table with the balances on equity accounts as shown in the example. I just copied them to Excel. The first thing we're going to do is to set up another table, which will be our statement. So let me show you how. First, you can see the identification details in this first lines about the statement here, name of the reporting entity, identification, which statement it is, currency, level of rounding, date, all you need to state under IFRS 18 with each statement. There are a few ways of doing it, so this is just one very simple one. Let's see the table we set up. The first column always describes the movement itself. We have two types of lines or rows here. Either they represent the balances or equity accounts being beginning and ending, or they represent the individual transactions within equity occurring during that period. Or we can simply say changes in equity during that period. And these transactions come from the example. Then we have a few columns listing individual components of equity exactly in accordance with the account balances above. So we have share capital, share premium, retain earnings, revaluation surplus. We have just these four in this example. And the last column stands for the total. Here we will have the horizontal totals. Please note that this table has sort of two parts. The upper part starts with the beginning of the comparative period. So that would be 1st January 20X3 and ends with the ending balance for the comparative period, 31st December 20X3. And these are comparatives. Then we have the second part, which starts with 31st December 20X3. This is logical because it is simply the beginning balance of the current reporting period of 1st January 20X4. It's not stated explicitly here. Sometimes you can see that in the statement that it copies the same amounts to the second part and labels them 1st January 20X4. Whatever seems more relevant to you is acceptable. And the second part ends with the balance at the end of the current reporting period. 31st December 20X4. So we have set it up. Let's start working. First, we will fill in the balances as of 1st January 20X3. Now, be careful here because there was a change in accounting policy and we need to report it separately. So we actually take the balances prior restatement and that is as of 31st December 20X2. So share capital was 10,000, share premium 1,100, retained earnings 5,240 and revaluation surplus 1,000. Let's make a horizontal total. And you can see that total equity was 17,340 just as in our table about. So we kind of transferred the numbers correctly. Then we have the change in accounting policy that affected our retained earnings by 660. So we put that change in a separate row titled as such, and we put those 660 in the column retained earnings because it affected retained earnings only within equity. And then we need to present the restated balance, which is the sum of the original balance and the restatement. 
So our restated retained earnings came to 5,900 and total equity is horizontal total. It is 18,000 just as in our table. Remember, always present the change in accounting policy this way as the first thing prior any other changes and present restated balance separately. Fine. So let's move to the changes in equity in 2OX3. Payment of dividends of 3000 decreases the retained earnings. So we report minus 3000 in the retained earnings column. Upward revaluation of property plan and equipment by 580 currency units increases the revaluation surplus. So we report plus 580 in that relevant column. And we title that line as other comprehensive income. So here, other comprehensive income line could affect more items, not just revaluation surplus. And we would report them all in this single line, just split into individual components of equity, like cash flow head reserve, defined benefit plans and other. But we don't have that here. And a net profit for the year then increases the retained earnings by 4,800 upwards. So we report plus 4,800 in the column for retained earnings. So we have one line for profit, which could be also loss, and one line for other comprehensive income. And we need to add the subtotal titled TCY or total comprehensive income. And the horizontal total in that line of 5,380 should be equal to your statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. Then do your final balance at the end of 20x3. Just be absolutely careful of which subtotals you include here to avoid double counting. And to help you, I sort of label these lines here. And so you can see that the line for the ending balance F equals to the sum of these three lines only because we are excluding double counted items. Fine. You can now check if the account balances are equal to the balances in the statement and it's okay. Now let's do the same for 2OX4. We have a new transaction here, issue of 2000 new one currency unit shares at 1.10 per share. This should tell you that it will affect two equity accounts, not just one, because the shares are issued above their nominal. First of all, we report this transaction in the line issue of new shares split into two columns plus 2000 times one currency unit as nominal in share capital and the remaining 10 cents times 2000, which is 200 in the column share premium because the company got 2000 shares at 110, that is 2200 in total, as you can see in the horizontal total. And then we have the similar three transactions as in the previous year. So let's just repeat payment of dividends minus 2,500 in retained earnings column, profit for the year plus 5,300 in retained earnings column, and add a comprehensive income for the year minus 200 in the revaluation surplus column since there was a downward revaluation of property plan and equipment. Right. Make your total comprehensive income totals and the final balance at the end of 2OX4 the same way as in the previous year. Just check your numbers in the statement with your account balances. And that's it. We have just prepared the individual statement of changes in equity. It was quite simple, but we intentionally went step by step. Consolidated statement would be more challenging due to existence of non-controlling interest. If you'd like to learn more about accounting and specifically IFRS, visit cpdbox.com, sign to our free newsletter and get started. Thank you for watching this video. Please share it. And if you are not subscribed, do this now so that you will not miss any new lecture.
Bye.